One of the most important debates that's happening in the Bitcoin Cash world right now is how to deal with tokens. Uh, this idea that we want to be able to put uh, other assets on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain that can be ideally can be traded, or at least in my opinion, can be traded permissionlessly in the same way that Bitcoin Cash itself can be traded permissionlessly. So I did a few things on this in the past few days. I tweeted about it. I made a video and I wrote a little article here. So let, let me just sort of summarize uh, the status of tokens on Bitcoin Cash. So first of all, we want to be able to do anything with tokens. Um, this isn't about one particular use case. This is about all the use cases of tokens. So that includes stocks, bonds, uh, coupons, tickets, whatever else, uh, things like that, where you have some type of, uh, you know, usually a, a commodity, uh, usually in the sense, usually like a fungible commodity, uh, where uh, there's some amount of them, and usually there is a central issuer. Uh, so there is somebody who is responsible for redeeming the tokens for something else. And so this is kind of where part of the debate is, which is like, all right, well, if, if these tokens almost by, by definition are, are basically always, uh, you know, have a, have a central authority and issuer uh, responsible for redeeming them, uh, it sounds like maybe it's not actually useful to uh, put the tokens on a blockchain to begin with. But actually, I, I, I think that that's incorrect. I think it actually is useful. Uh, first of all, we can see this in practice today on Ethereum. Ethereum is being widely used for uh, these ERC-20 tokens that are, uh, you know, many of them anyway, are uh, fully permissionless in the sense that uh, the users can just send them to one another without having to get the sign off from a central uh, authority. Now, ERC-20 tokens are kind of a subtle point because they are actually a script template and or rather sort of an API. And so actually you can do a lot with them, uh, such as centralize them. So some ERC-20 tokens are actually basically just centralized. Like there was some news about uh, Bancor recently. They were, Bancor was hacked. Uh, but Bancor is just supposed to be a smart contract. Um, how did they freeze their users' funds when they were hacked? That's interesting. Well, that's because there's there's a, there's sort of a, a extra component to that smart contract that allows them to do that. So Bancor is has this sort of weird centralized component to their token, uh, but that's okay. I mean, like the 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 thing is, there's actually value in being on the spectrum. Uh, there's actually value in having many of the properties of decentralization, but not necessarily all of them uh, for some of these tokens. It really depends on the nature of the token uh, and the nature of the project using the token. Uh, so anyway, another thing I want to talk about is uh, legality. Um, I, I don't think that we ought to be assuming the law works in a certain way and plugging that into the protocol rules. Um, I think we should just make protocols that allow tokens to be tokens, and then the people that create these still have to comply with the law. Uh, so this is similar to Bitcoin Cash itself, uh, which is money. Um, we don't worry about uh, building in you know, AML, KYC into the protocol. Uh, that's that can be better done at a different layer and there's an analogy here which is just the analogy to basically every other internet protocol um, you know when you send an email it's not that it's not that it's built into the protocol that you must scan your email for illegal content or something like that uh, that's not how the protocols work you put the the legal structure somewhere else okay not into the protocol um, all right uh, so another another issue to think about are incentives uh, so, so the incentive is basically of how miners work. Uh, we want to make sure that Bitcoin Cash continues to function correctly. So there's some concern over basically anytime you change the consensus protocol, you got to be really careful that you aren't building in, you know, broken incentives that cause the miners to not want to secure the chain. That would be bad. So an example of the, a way this could go wrong is basically if we introduce tokens on Bitcoin Cash, and the tokens turn out to be much more valuable than Bitcoin Cash itself, then the miners are only being paid in Bitcoin Cash, and so they're they're actually sort of being underpaid. If it ends up storing a lot more value than than what we're paying the transaction fees in, uh, or than what the mining reward is for the for the miners, so that's something to be aware of. We want to be convinced that the incentives of whatever ever it is we're doing is correct, uh, and that means making sure the miners are adequately compensated. Uh, for the work that they're doing. And some people argue that that basically happens anyway, so long as the mining reward and, and uh, transaction fees are still there, it doesn't really matter if you store 
uh, you know, other data and the blockchain, you're still conforming to the rules. And maybe that's true. Um, we'll see. Um, all right, so then I want to briefly talk about what are the different like proposals. Uh, so there's so there's this idea of colored coins that goes back a really long ways. This goes back to I don't know what year, but but probably at least five or more years ago. Um, and people had working implementations of this. Definitely four years ago, when I worked at Reddit, there were definitely working implementations of some of this stuff because I was looking at this for Reddit. Uh, and I remember that's sort of how I actually ended up learning about colored coins was by researching this for Reddit. Um, now the way color coins works, the basic idea is as follows. I mean, it's, it's called colored coins because the idea is like you could take a penny and you could color it and you could make a bunch of these and then you could call these your tokens. And so the way that works on Bitcoin is you just build Bitcoin transactions and then you add some extra meta information to the outputs that says this is a token of type X or whatever. Uh, and then you just label them basically. And then there might be some extra details about you know, creating new ones and stuff like that, how the rules work around minting and transferring. But, but basically the idea is you just add some meta information to the outputs. So you can still send like a certain number of Satoshis represents a number of token. Uh, it's just that you label it with that token. Um, another way to do it is where you add meta information into the op return output. And then you don't have to necessarily tie the number of Satoshis you're sending to the number of tokens. So the op return uh, approach is more like just putting this meta information about the outputs inside an op return. The advantage of color coins is that we can do them today on Bitcoin Cash. The disadvantage is that they aren't enforced by the miners. So what that means is basically you can build invalid colored coins transactions and if you're running a light node, you do not necessarily know that they are invalid. You receive a transaction that's on the blockchain which you've confirmed with your SPV wallet, but actually the miners aren't checking the colored coins rules. It's possible somebody made a new token out of thin air and you wouldn't necessarily know without doing a little bit more work. So it turns out the way that you can do this with colored coins, if the colored coins protocol is, is designed with this in mind, you can still track the colored coins protocols back in time to the Genesis token uh, or the Genesis transaction for the tokens. Uh, it just so that requires more work. You can't merely look to see that your transaction is confirmed. You do also need to track back in time the token transactions to make sure that it's sort of valid all the way back. Uh, and then in practice, you're, you're likely to end up basically relying on a service to do that for you uh, because that would be a lot of you know, bandwidth and computation for an SPV wallet to be doing, uh, depending on how widely used the token is. Um, so there are other ways to do it. So besides colored coins, I, I got a, 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 so Justice Ranvier was telling me that I shouldn't be calling these other things Colored coins. So there's two other protocols that don't require any protocol changes, consensus protocol changes to Bitcoin Cash, which are uh, Omni and Counterparty, because both of these rely on rather than coloring outputs, they rely on having more of a state model where like the amount of something is contained inside of an address. But they're similar to colored coins in the in the sense that they don't require any changes to the underlying protocol, and they work by just coloring or adding meta information to these transactions. Uh, but they work in a, in a different way, similar to the difference between Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin, if I understand correctly. Um, okay, so that's it for sort of the ones that don't require changing the Bitcoin Cash protocol. So what about some of these other ones? Or actually, actually, I take that back. So there's one more that doesn't require changing the protocol, which is Tokita. Tokita is really different because, so the idea behind Tokita is that it's a protocol for tokens. It doesn't require changing Bitcoin Cash, but it's not colored coins. The way it works is relying on the central issuer to basically sign off on every transaction. So every token transaction consists of two transactions, sort of the initiating one and then the, the sort of the spending one. And the spending one has to be signed by the issuer. Uh, so that's a very different property. So that's not really permissionless uh, because you know the issuer has to sign every single transaction. So it, it doesn't sound, you should, and you should read the Tokita uh, paper to, to uh, to understand the rationale for this, but uh, uh, it seems certainly on a, on a scale of permissionless to permissioned, it is definitely a little bit more on the permissioned side than some of these other ones if every single transaction has to be signed by the issuer. Okay, so the final one that's, that's sort of in the, in the news in Bitcoin Cash world is Group. Group is a proposal by Andrew Stone uh, that was originally in the form of Op Group last fall, if I remember correctly. Uh, it is now in the form of, or maybe it was actually the spring. 
Uh, it's now in the form of something that's just called group because it doesn't necessarily have an opcode. And basically the idea behind this is to have a way to uh, have minor enforced tokens. And so the great advantage of group is that it's similar to some of these color coins protocols, but uh, it's enforced by miners and so you have genuine SPV. If a transaction is in a block, you know it's good that the miners actually enforced these group rules, uh, which allow you to do tokens. Um, so all these protocols are sort of on the table. Uh, I'm talking with some other people about designing a new one. So maybe we'll end up with, uh, what, what, what we'll actually do is we'll, we'll definitely have something on Bitcoin Cash. I mean, there are working, there's working code for colored coins. I mean, all we have to do is take it and just repurpose it and use it on Bitcoin Cash. Or we make a new one that's informed by all the, you know, the, the costs and benefits of all these other ones that people have learned throughout time and we make a new colored coins protocol. Uh, but I, I definitely think that doing colored coins is going to actually work uh, because it doesn't require any protocol changes. Uh, and uh, it's questionable whether group will, will happen uh, just because it's, it's naturally more contentious because it requires actually changing the protocol. Um, all right, so that's really all I have time for right now. So I'm gonna keep researching colored coins and we'll be involved somehow with the money button and with yours.org uh, in, uh, in this token stuff. And uh, probably what we'll end up doing is either using a token ourselves or uh, we'll make it really easy for our users to make tokens or both of those things. So thank you for watching.